Temple. We are set for semifinal number two here at the Sprint Center in the Big 12 Championship. Kansas has already made it through to the title game, playing for the hardware. Who will they play tomorrow night in the championship game of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship? Will it be the Red Raiders of Texas Tech or the Mountaineers of West Virginia? Just about set to tip, just about set to find out. This should be a defensive war between these two teams. Earlier tonight, a shorthanded Kansas State team did all they did, all they could do to stay with the Big 12 Player of the Year, Devontae Graham and the Kansas Jayhawks. But KU proved a little too much for Bill Weber's team, or Bruce Weber's team, pardon me, as LeGerald Vick cleaned it up with an alley-oop. And KU moves in to the championship game as Kansas State gave it all they could at one point. Took a 16-point lead for Kansas, cut it down to two, but Bruce Weber, without his two best players, Barry Brown and Dean Wade, ran out of gas. Who will run out of gas in this next matchup? Probably neither team because <laughs> Texas Tech and West Virginia never seem to keep the motor from running at full speed. They are so difficult to deal with. Bob Wachus and Fran Priscilla and Holly Rowe. Looking forward to this one. Absolutely. Speaking of motors, how about Javon Carter? One power conference scholarship offer, which he accepted, by the way, to West Virginia to a boatload of accolades over his terrific four-year career. He's the heart and soul of West Virginia. But guess what, Bob? There is another really good senior guard in this building, and he plays for Texas Tech, Holly Rowe. That's right. It's so amazing how their careers have mirrored each other. Keenan Evans and Javon Carter have steadily improved over four years. And for Keenan Evans, he has become the heartbeat of his team in his senior season. He leads them in scoring 17 points a game. Quite frankly, he's one of the best guards in the country. We asked him what he's most proud of. Most important this morning, um, just the past seasons, not having winning records in this league or winning records really kind of in general, especially my first season. Um, and that's all that, you know, that means to me is just winning goes in hand with, you know, being up there with greats. So I just want to, you know, win. What's even more fun, they will be going head to head. Look for some special things that Texas Tech put in today at shoot around to try to help get Keenan Evans past that junkyard dog defender, Javon Carter. The similarities between the two teams and the two programs makes this game a lot of fun. You've had two teams this season, both built on defense, built on toughness, both at one point this year ranked in the top ten. In fact, Texas Tech was ranked as high as number six in America back in mid-February, a program best. Bob Huggins has this West Virginia team ranked 53 weeks in a row now, going back three seasons, and neither brings in the one and done. Both look to try and find the under-recruited kid and coach them to their system. And both he and Chris Beard, who shares the Big 12 Coach of the Year award this season with Bill Self, have done a terrific job this year. And Keenan Evans talked about winning. Javon Carter has won 102 games in four years with two Sweet 16s, and he would love to add to that. We are set for semifinal number two. Who will advance to take on Kansas in the championship game tomorrow night of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship? Sad Kanate comes up short. This Texas Tech team is as good a team at scouting your offense as anybody in the Big 12. Good stop, first possession. Keenan Evans in the post against the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Two years running, and look who ends up with the basketball. Daxter Miles lobs it. Harris can't finish, but a foul call. Got pushed in the back. On that first possession, Keenan Evans with about six looked up at the shot clock and realized he had to uh, get something up, couldn't do it. And then watching transition, a little push in the back by Odiasi. 
And Harris, who started every game this year, goes to the line. Wesley Harris had a pretty good high school teammate who we saw in the first game, Malik Newman. West Virginia gets set up off the miss as Isa Ahmad just about had a steal. Their press last night against Baylor was outstanding. They kept the pressure on. They rode players in. And there's Press Virginia with a trap near midcourt. Ahmad and Harris bottled it up. Odiase now in the post. Goes to work. a jump hook up. That's off the mark. Harris with the rebound. Tags Kanate, step back, short. Keenan Evans thought about a three. Justin Gray along two. Jumping up in the air and coming down. Yeah, almost traveled. That was Javon Carter as the Red Raider fans were looking for a travel. That's short for Harris. Odiase down on the ground. Kanate faints with him for it. And it's going to belong to Texas Tech. Terrific job by Chris Beard this year. Co-coach of the year with Bill Self. And his mentor, Bob Knight. A great influence on him. He spent 10 years in Lubbock as an assistant to Bob and Pat Knight. And the defense and the ball movement, very similar. Culver tries to go coast to coast and does for the first points for Texas Tech. That's a freshman that NBA scouts are taking note of. They are. Yep, and, and Harris and uh, Smith as well. Texas Tech had a veteran team to come into this year, but they've allowed these two freshmen to be the second and third leading scorers. Thanks, Canate. Down the lane. Finger roll is good. And Jared Culver is out of Lubbock, Texas, so he really wasn't on the national radar. Homegrown player who's been outstanding as a freshman. Shot clock winding down for Keenan Evans. Forces one up. Rainbow jumper no good. Zaire Smith way up in the air Pogo for the stick. offensive rebound. And Culver knocks down a three. That was a pogo stick rebound by Zaire Smith. Kick out to Culver. Issa Ahmad, the beneficiary of a moving screen. Carter called for the foul. Hard to say who's the best athlete in this league, but take a look at this guy. He's in the top three, and then a kick out to his fellow freshman. And look at that stroke, Bob. S Smith is the better athlete and a good basketball player. Culver is the better basketball player and a good athlete. They complement each other so well. And being under the radar coming into the Big 12 year, they have taken this league by surprise. Any danger that one or the other may not come back? Oh, no. I think they're both going to come back, but they're not going to be in Lubbock for four years. That's the plan. That's how good they are, and Chris Beard is okay with that. Davide Moretti comes on at point guard as he will give a brief rest to Keenan Evans. And Zach Smith is in the lineup for Texas Tech. He, of course, spent a good portion of the year on the bench with a broken foot. Missed 13 games, just trying to work his way back into their rotation before postseason here. Backdoor cut and the reverse for Naeem Stevenson. That's a nice feed from Tommy Hamilton. Absolutely. And when you backdoor cut, you always want to finish the cut so the passer knows you're not going to stop in mid-stride. Well executed. Miles 
Got it. Oh, that's so big, Bob. Daxter Miles has been on fire over the last few weeks. You know, he was shooting 25% behind the arc, and the last few games, he's shooting 50%, 19 to 39. Then Miles commits the foul, as we'll step aside for the first time early on in semifinal number two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought. This is excellent execution. Big man Tommy Hamilton's got the ball. Watch this. He's looking to the other side of the court, but once he looks back towards Keenan Evans, watch him, watch him nod his head. Nod his head. Go back door. I'll get you. Well done. Excellent. Right behind the pressure defense. You know West Virginia's going to get out into those passing lanes, and you have to take advantage of back cutting and getting some easy ones. Good hands by Ahmad. Naeem Stevenson tracks down the loose ball but then throws it away trying to find Hamilton. I know West Virginia this season probably has impressed on the percentage of possessions they have in years past. But so far tonight, it's been almost 100% of possessions. You yeah. surprised by that no, at all? Not really, no, because you know what? Uh, it's, it's tournament time. They pressed Baylor terrifically last night. They don't have the depth of guards that they had when they instituted that defense four years ago. West can't hit. Hamilton's got the rebound. Well, I actually talked to some of the West Virginia players about that pressure and how their legs felt after playing late last night against Texas. They said they're so used to this by now. They view this time as a back-to-back -back opportunity to prepare for the NCAA tournament, which could be back-to-back -back in some cases. So they want their legs to feel good. They've got it down to a science. And Daxter Miles said, I actually feel great. I feel like I didn't even play yesterday. You know why, Bob? Because they practice two to three hours every day all year long. And playing games is actually a break for them. It's a rest. It's only 40 minutes. Now this offense, everybody touches it. Yep. Beetle Bolden ripped it away from Smith. That's the second time, Bob, we've seen Tommy Hamilton operating away from the basket and finding a cutter. Now this is one of the four seniors that came in under Tubby Smith, Zach Smith. He's been an all-conference player. You mentioned the injuries. But Tubby Smith laid a great foundation, not only of good players, but solid people who have bought into Chris Beard's system over two years. 15 games into the season, Zach Smith broke his foot, missed 13 games. Three out of the last four, he has played sparingly, misses a couple at the line. But after being honorable mention all Big 12 the last two years, he was a preseason first team all league selection. Everyone thought he was going to have a huge year. So that is a big time player for Chris Beard to get at the end of the year. If there's any way they can round his game into shape, imagine in the NCAA tournament what he could give this group. Well, he gives them great depth and experience. That's the start. Hamilton from the wing. Yes, for three. Uh, we've seen a nice start for Tommy Hamilton, a big man, six foot eleven, who can knock down threes, and we've seen his passing acumen as well. Logan Rout out to the corner, extra pass to West. Hamilton a rebound. Uh, West should have shot the open one. He walked into a contested shot. All five cut and move, and the big men can handle it. Keenan Evans with the left hand. That's what you call inverting your offense. Bigs out, Littles in. Issa Ahmad, in and out. Zach Smith is going to wait for some help and get trapped. Naeem Stevenson connects. Timeout Mountaineers. What a start for Texas Tech. Seven minutes in. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. It's an 8-0 Red Raider run. We 
are back at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship semifinals between Texas Tech and West Virginia for the right to take on Kansas in the title game. And Texas Tech doing work against yeah. the trap. Now that's not the ideal place to pick up your dribble in the half court corner, but good ball movement. Today at the shoot around, Bob, we watched Chris Beard methodically put together a number of different press offenses versus press Virginia. And it helps when you have five ball handlers on the floor, including those big guys. Well, Fran, you're so right. One of the last things Chris Beard told his team at shoot around this morning was, no matter what that Hall of Fame coach on the other bench throws at us, whether it's a 2-3, no matter what zone we see, you are prepared, you're ready. You'll be strong with the ball, you'll attack. He kept building this positive mindset into his group today that they're ready for anything that Bob Huggins will throw at them. Now, he's not officially in the Hall of Fame, but I think it was safe that he said he <laughs> was a Hall of Fame. He will be. He's on his way. <laughs> only a matter of time. And only a matter of time before Javon Carter gets going. He's got a chance for a three-point play. Very emotional senior night in Morgantown when Carter and Miles went through that night. Take a look. Javon Carter, he is going to hate to take off that West Virginia uniform. But offensively, defensively, in the locker room, by the way, two-time All-Big 12, first-team All-Academic. Chris Kramer at Purdue, Aaron Kraft at Ohio State, and Javon Carter, the only three major conference players to be all-defensive team in their major conference all four years that they play at their respective schools as Carter picks up the foul. That's his second. And that is precarious now. A lot of time left in this first half. Beto Bolden's going to come in. Did I jinx him? An announcer jinx for fouls? <laughs> oh, I have heard you say more than once about Javon Carter. No one has faster hands in college basketball without fouling than Carter. Now he's got two. That's usually the case, Bob. So I jinxed him. <laughs> Watch the moving and cutting now. Ball moves quicker than the dribble. Shot clock winding down. Zaire Smith splits a double team. Oh! Tries to dunk it and Bolden, who takes more charges than any other player for West Virginia, stands his ground, paid the price, and now there's an injury concern for Bob Huggins. Beetle Bolden hasn't gotten up. Hopefully it's just the wind knocked out of Beetle Bolden. He took a knee right up under the chin from Zaire Smith. You'll, you'll see the athleticism of Zaire Smith. Take a look. High flyer and Beetle Bolden, you're exactly right, Bob. They don't keep official stats on charges in the Big 12, but he's in that 30 range, which is far above second place. How about the toughness? The hard outer shell, just like a beetle. That's why his grandma gave him that name. He is at the scorer's table, shaking it off, ready to come right back in. As Keenan Evans almost took it away from Chase Harler. And Harler plays about five seconds. And here comes Bolden. Well, Beetle Bolden is coming off what he described as the worst game of his life last night. He played one minute, registered zero stats. He said, I felt so bad because my teammates always have my back, and last night I didn't have theirs. He has vowed to be a much better player today. He said, I was making mistakes I don't normally make. I won't do that tonight. Big shot from Dexter Miles. Dexter Miles, Miles last 43s. He's knocked down 20. He has been on fire in the last couple weeks of the season. Beetle Bolden gets the steal. And lays it in over Culver. And here comes the press again. Ray blocked by Kanate. That is all instinct from Kanate. They do not practice blocking shots with him. Bolden gets Odiasi caught on a switch, goes right around him, lays it in. It's a 9-0 Mountaineer run. Now Beetle Bolden has already made up for last night. How about the 
hustle from Bolden from behind from the backcourt where he was pressuring got all the way up underneath the basket and blocked the shot of Culver my goodness has Bolden made an impact Beto Bolden he came to Morgantown as a shooter a scorer 155 pounds he's gained 15 and he's gained confidence and he's scoring over the big fella and watch Kanate timing anticipation get that out of here it's playoff time in the Big 12. Well, we'll be keeping our eyes on that one, Kevin, no doubt about it. Duke in Carolina, Chapter 3, and Duke handled the absence of Marvin Bagley tremendously well. They won all four games when he was out. Let's see how they do without the depth of Duvall in the backcourt. As yeah. Evans lines up at 3, and the long rebound out to Wesley Harris. Von Carter with two fouls. Be very interesting to see if he sits the entire half. A lot of it will depend on Beetle Bolden and the way he's gotten off to a great start today. Canate, deep hook shot, in and out. The tip up by Allen almost went. Brandon Francis able to corral the rebound. Teddy Allen almost with a prayer of a tip in. Stevenson away from the screen creates space fadeaways too strong another rebound for Harris Texas Tech's gonna give you man-to-man -man defense 95% of the time Bolden comes up short for three thought he got bumped I thought he was a good challenge by Odiasi, the big guy. Got a hand up. Odiasi set the screen, but Stevenson picked up his dribble, so now he needs help from the big man and gets it back. Ten to shoot. Now the screen there. Keenan Evans, five to shoot. Gonna try to create with the left hand, short. Here comes Bolden to Kanate. Offensive foul. Stevenson took the charge. Tied at 15 here, fighting to get to Kansas and the championship game in the Big 12 tomorrow night. Well, in the ACC, the number one team in America, they're already through. It's Virginia against either Duke or North Carolina tomorrow night at 8.30 on ESPN. That follows our game at 6 Eastern tomorrow night. We'll have the Phillips 66 Big 12 championship game and then the New York Life ACC tournament championship game would be next. And in the ACC, Bob, because of the schedule, the unbalance, Virginia beat Duke at Duke. They also beat North Carolina in Charlottesville. They've only met one time each. And Virginia ran away with the uh, ACC again this year, third time in four seasons. Stevenson blocking foul on Bolden. Bolden thought he had position. That's his second, and here comes Javon Carter to the scorer's table. How much does that change life in a conference when you have an unbalanced schedule, as opposed to the Big 12, where you know you are playing every team home and away every year? You know, it's, it's um, I don't want to say it's not fair, it's just, it's not great for the league, but because of realignment, that's what we're left with. And obviously, in a year where Virginia is so good, you'd love to see them play Duke and Carolina more than once. But uh, that's the way it is in every power conference except the Big East and the Big 12. And we've seen it all year, Bob. Rematches and revenge games and 
third opportunities to play. I just think that's what makes the Big 12 a great league for us to cover. But practice today, Bob Huggins was lamenting that fact in relation to Baylor. Because right now, Joe Lenardi has Baylor well on the outside. I mean, not even considered one of the first four out, like next four out. So well off the bubble, and yet just about all of their losses this year are good losses playing in this league. Yeah, absolutely. That's good defense. Look at Tommy Hamilton. Big fella moving his feet. Here comes Nyan Stevenson. Off to Smith. Zaire Smith. Way up in the air to hang from the rim. He went to the penthouse on that one. But Tommy Hamilton on the offensive end tonight with some nifty passing and a three. And that time moving his feet against Javon Carter, the transfer from DePaul. And that's why they haven't missed Zach Smith quite as much, Bob, because of their depth. Foul called on Zaire Smith. Javon Carter once had a choice to make. Think he made the right choice? We'll tell you what that choice was with Holly Rowe when we come back. This week's sports medicine and experts of the University of Kansas Health System are assisting big errors in I told myself, whichever sport I got my first scholarship in, that was the one I was going to take the most serious. And which was it? Basketball. Carter to the rim. Lays it in. Baseball came easy to me. That was a sport that I could just go out and play whenever. Stolen away by Carter. What was your greatest accolade in baseball? What were you best at? Defense. <laughs> golden Glove. I used to win a Golden Glove in my leagues all the time. Well, Fran, you've talked about the fast hands of Javon Carter. He's the career steals leader at West Virginia with three steals here in the Big 12 tournament. He'll also set the single season record. So that baseball path and the Golden Glove paying off on the basketball court. Yeah, and he hit 600 in uh, intramural softball last spring, I heard, Bob, at West Virginia. Stains away here. A one-hander won't go, but Ahmad is there to clean it up. You can see with that athleticism, that build, quick hands, why he'd be a great baseball player. Yeah, absolutely. I think he'd be pretty good in a few sports. And in this league and in his career, he's been a shutdown defender. If Dana Holgerson might want him out there locking up one on one with somebody out on the perimeter. Evans banks it home. Another assist from Tommy Hamilton, whose father played at DePaul, like Tommy did, also played in the NBA. Legendary high school player from Chicago. Some odd uh, through a triple team bad decision hit the underside of the rim and he's now behind the play Culver with a lane back up to Hamilton the ball movement now it's Culver in the corner Offensive rebound by Gray Exactly what Justin Gray does Smith alone underneath another great find by Tommy Hamilton And right now he's playing with Zach Smith who as you mentioned earlier, he's still a little bit rusty, but Chris Beard said today he's got a lot of confidence in his senior. And you saw the quarterback in the house, by the way, Patrick Mahomes, the presumptive starter for the Chiefs, here to cheer on his old alma mater. Justin Gray, one of those four-year guys that has been here through mostly good times. He went to the NCAA tournament as a sophomore under Tubby Smith, but what a great team leader. He chose Texas Tech over Harvard, and his brother Jonathan actually played in the Sweet 16 back when Cornell went. But uh, just a, a guy that has bought in. By the way, Bob, has had to sacrifice because of those, those two outstanding freshmen both playing his wing position. Hamilton to three. By the way, that dunk by Zach Smith got him to a thousand career points. Right on the nose. Harris a three. Yes. He's gaining more confidence, Wesley Harris, but. 
I mentioned earlier, he started every game, so Bob Huggins has confidence in him. Hesitation dribble by Evans. Can't finish with the left hand. Wesley Harris, the trailer. Shot fake and the pull-up. Francis off the feed from Stevenson. Carter leans in. That won't go. Ball needs to go side to side for Texas Tech to be effective. And that's what Keenan Evans is signaling for. Five to shoot. Nine, Stevenson. Shuffle his feet. Three-point lead for Texas Tech. West Virginia in a battle to meet Kansas in the title game tomorrow. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance. Dave Fleming back with you here in Kansas City in the Big 12. Coming up on our Audi Halftime Report, Robbie Hummel and I will be out at midcourt. We'll get you highlights from the first game in these semifinals, Kansas and Kansas State Plus. All of a sudden, all kinds of turmoil on the bubble. We'll talk about that shortly. Bob, Fran? All right, Dave, thanks very much. 3.49 to go in the first half, and the playmaker is now on the sideline as Tommy Hamilton has been the top of the key orchestrator when Texas Tech's offense has been at their best. Absolutely. Three points, five assists, 11 points off those assists, responsible for 61% of the offense, and that's a guy coming off the bench which speaks to the depth of Texas Tech. Daxter Miles hits another three. Bob, for the first two and a half months of the season, he made 25 of his first 100 threes. Since then, he's been on fire over 50% the last two weeks. And West Virginia very reliant on making shots to set up their pressure. Evans is going to have to put one up. Shot clock winding down. A long two and a long rebound. Here comes Carter. Javon Carter. Off to Issa Ahmad. He draws the foul. Remember Carter playing with those two fouls he picked up early. But Bob Huggins trusting his senior. Good decision. Don't want to run anybody over. Think about it. Miles and Carter. They played in a high school all-star game in Beckley, West Virginia after they signed. They became friends. They didn't know each other. They've been together for four years. They've been roommates. They keep their apartment incredibly spotless. But most importantly, they've been together more than any two power guards in college basketball in terms of games played. That's the first lead for West Virginia since we were about two and a half minutes in. So what was once a nine point lead for Texas Tech, that's gone. The Mountaineers. Up by one. A push called on Logan Routh. But check that. Machi Bender is called for the foul. So that'll be a one and one. And Stevenson will go to the line. Texas Tech still has one foul to give with two and a half minutes to go in the first half, Holly. Well, Bob Huggins told me right before this game that one of the things he was looking, 
looking forward to about Texas Tech is how many players they rotate in. He knew that they have such depth on their bench, and so we've seen him go to his bench a little earlier and more often. We've seen more players rotate in, I think, than the normal rotation for West Virginia. One, because he knows Texas Tech has guys rolling in, and he wants to keep his guys fresh for the second half. Two, because it's the second of back-to-back -back days after Press Virginia, so smart move by Bob Huggins. And, if, and, and Holly, if people haven't seen Texas Tech this year, They've been so good when they've been at full strength, and we're seeing a lot of that tonight. Miles after his own miss, saves it. Issa Ahmad gave it up to Bender, back out to Carter. The hustle by West Virginia creates a three. No hesitation from Carter, and a good kick out by Bender. Evans leans in, too strong, Bender the rebound, here comes Carter. Daxter Miles back to Carter in the corner, but he traveled. You, you got to know your role, Bob, on this West Virginia team. Take a look. Ball is loose, saved inside. Bender knows he's not going to score. What does he do? He kicks it out to the open man who can knock down shots. current drought for Texas Tech is a lot of 13 point turnaround. They went from nine up to four down coming up on a minute to go in the half. Nine Stevenson hand checked by Bender. No. It looked like Bender would have been called for a reach in instead away from the ball. They've got Jared Culver for his first. And now Tech out of fouls to give. Offensive foul called on Issa Ahmad. As competitive as this tournament has been, the SEC tournament has been just as good. There have been some great games played. Florida and Arkansas currently on the SEC network. That's the last spot to be determined for the semifinals tomorrow, the championship game on Sunday. Arkansas has got a one-point halftime lead, but Tennessee, and Rick Barnes, that's got to be the story of that league this year, and the story certainly making it to the semifinal. Pick 13th in the preseason poll. Rick Barnes knows a lot about the Big 12. Two days after he was fired at Texas, he was hired at Tennessee. It turned out to be a terrific hire. That goes down for Moretti. We've talked about the other two freshmen, but Moretti's had some big moments this year. The young man from Bologna, Italy. They think he's going to be a good player when the seniors graduate. Not much of a differential. So Beetle Bolden dribbles it down to 10 to shoot. Five to shoot. Ahmad goes away from the screen. Blocking foul called on Moretti with one second on the shot clock. When you play a team three times, you almost make them, especially if you're well scouted, you make them play left-handed, Bob. You make them go away from their strengths. And this is a low-scoring game because these teams know each other so well. Issa Ahmad now one of three at the line. Two and a half seconds to go on the half, so Harler and Kanate will come on for Bender and Bolden. And a timeout called by Chris Beard, the one he can't take with them, trying to draw something up for the last two and a half seconds. Smart move by Bob Huggins by getting Bolden and Carter out. Remember, they both had two. Doesn't need him now. He's milked it. They've gotten to the half. 
Now, two and a half seconds here. You have to be careful because if Ahmad makes the free throw and you take it out of bounds, if you throw the long home run ball and throw it away and no one touches it, West Virginia gets the ball back underneath their own basket. So you really don't want to take a lot of chances right here. And one playing time anomaly that's slowed under the radar a little bit. Sachs Kanate, only 11 minutes played, started off one for five from the field and has taken a long rest before being put back on the floor for the last couple of seconds it, here. He wasn't very good last night. They got great production from Logan Rout. His plus minus last night, ready for this? Minus 24. That could be a reason. This young man, plus 17 last night in his career high minutes. Former walk on. Ahmad misses them both. Good if it goes, long distance, and way off the mark for Justin Gray. But still for West Virginia, at one point they trailed by nine, so a ten-point turnaround, they lead by one at the break. And let's head over to Holly. Well, Coach, sack about Kanata, limited minutes in that first half. What's going on with him? With who? Sags. He's taking shots he shouldn't take. That's why he's on the bench with you. Yeah. Okay. Javon Carter picked up two fouls. What trust do you have in him that you put him back in there and he's able to withstand that? He's done it all year. we got to have him on the floor. What else do you need to do better offensively? Make a shot, make a pass to an open guy, set a screen, maybe move a little bit. Okay. Moving's always good in basketball, right? Good. Yep. Always the best at breaking it down. Bob Huggins, our score here at the half. West Virginia leads Texas Tech by one, 27 to 26. Stay tuned for the Audi Halftime Report coming up after a short break. Dave Fleming and Robbie Hummel will have it for you. We return. It's Champ Week presented by Principal as we continue here with the semifinals of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. A tight one between West Virginia and Texas Tech. As you would expect, these two teams fighting for the right to take on Kansas in the championship game tomorrow at 6 Eastern. It is the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Just about set for the start of the second half. Texas Tech at one point led by nine, but West Virginia came back, put together a run, and they've got a one-point lead. Bob Schusen here with Fran Fraschilla. We'll hear from Holly Rowe in just a moment. You can flip a switch if you're Press Virginia. It seemed like they did. Once Dax Miles knocked a few shots down, the whole first half changed. Yeah, exactly. When you score or you turn a team over, you get to set up your press a little easier. And Texas Tech was efficient when they didn't have to see that pressure. Not as much when they saw the press. But two teams grounded on defense, know each other well, not going to let you get easy shots. I expect the Stars to start to break down the offense a little bit, get a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, make some plays. How about how even the first half was as Kanate starts off the second half with a smooth-looking bank shot. Both teams in the first half, 10 for 25 from the field. Both teams 4 of 8 from 3. Yeah, exactly. And the reason it's a low-scoring game, these teams are locked in on the scouting reports. They take away your strengths. But right off the bat, Kanate, good set play by Bob Huggins, getting him an easy one. Well, Chris Beard of Texas Tech told me the problem with running their offense in that first half was making that initial pass against the pressure. He said, you know, we're not doing a good job screening, cutting, getting yourself open. And that possession right there was a perfect example of that. Guys standing on the wing with the ball and just like not getting any help. Somebody's got to come help these guys and make that initial cut. One thing I'd like to see, Bob, is for Texas Tech to get the ball going side to side. You want to make the blue jerseys move side to side so you can open up driving opportunities. Culver down the lane, lost it. Taken away by Ahmad. Here comes Wesley Harris. And he'll wait for some help. Canate has it stolen away by Culver. Keenan Evans fouled by Dax Miles. That was not good recognition by Sagaba Kanate because Culver 
snuck along when you catch it on the low post. Look middle first. And you see the quick hands right there by Jared Culver. Pretty good athlete who, by the way, is probably not the best athlete in his family. His brother Trey this weekend will try to become the three-time NCAA indoor high jump champion. His best is seven feet, seven and three quarters, the fourth best in NCAA history. And so that is an athletic family. So you're saying if mom tried to hide the cookies on the top shelf, they're not staying hidden in the Culver house. Right. Right, like one of those guys Great. is going up to get them. It's all about food with you, Bob. I've not noticed that. <laughs> it's a pattern. It's a good one. <laughs> now this Texas Tech team has a, a terrific lineage of players whose dads, relatives, really good athletes. Canate, no, followed by Harris. Leslie Harris came from the top of the key and recognized that ball was coming off and that's what his job is. See, this ball has got to get swung to the other side. Otherwise, they're going to play two on five. Shot clock winding down. Culver, straightaway three. That's way short. They get the ball in deep to Kanate. They've done that early in this half. And watch, no one blocks out because Sayer Smith went to double team. And his man, Harris, look at that. That's a free run to the rim. This should be a post up. But it's not. Instead, it's a three. <laughs> The back tap and Culver's got it for Tech. It should have been a post up, Bob. I told you. Culver down the lane, takes the bump, finishes, plus the foul. Now that's just a lack of awareness by West Virginia. They did not get five people set. Take a look. No one stops the basketball. And uh, Issa Ahmad didn't even turn around. As a senior in high school last year in Lubbock, averaged 28 a game and hit our radar. He was number 80 on our ESPN 100. And our ESPN recruiting guys had Jared Culver ranked as the eighth best prospect in the state of Texas. But stayed home and went to Texas yeah, Tech. Yeah, and that's underrated. There were not 79 better players in the country. But because of where he was in West Texas, he kind of did fly under the national radar. Devon Carter lost it. Taken away by Keenan Evans. He glides in. Can't finish, but he'll go back to the line as he draws the foul on Wesley Harris. That's the first on Harris and a chance for Keenan Evans to put Texas Tech back on top. When you think about the Big 12, Yes, Kansas gets some one and guns. Texas has gotten a couple. Oklahoma may have one in Trey Young. But this league through the years has been built on four-year guys. The Buddy Heels, the Frank Masons, and you're looking out at this court tonight. There's a couple of top 100 guys, but by and large, they're guys like Evans and Miles and Carter who got better every year. That's great coaching. Evans has that one. The free throw shooting has not been good either way. Texas Tech is now 5 for 10. And West Virginia is 3 for 7 at the line. In a game low scoring, in a game this close, I know coaches, they're going to look at those free throw numbers at the end of the game and think about what could have been if you come up a couple of points well, short. I'm, I'm okay with that because West Virginia in conference play shoots 81% from the line. So I'll take those law of averages. Miles. It's another triple. Eight for ten in a tournament from behind the arc. For the young man from Baltimore, eight for ten. Boy, if you had him in a draft pool, you could be doing well. Culver can't finish. Trying to hang from the rim was Zaire Smith. Here comes Miles. Heat check for Miles. And he comes up short. 
Zach Smith with the rebound. You know, if you had one of those tournament pools where you take took players and counted up the points, you'd love to have that kid. A little more flow right now, both ways offensively. You see the ball moving a little bit better. Miles, down the lane, scoops, can't score it. And a foul called on Lamont West. One point game, a little over four minutes gone by in the second half. How about Chris Beard's inheritance? It helped, we'll explain. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought We inherited a great base from Hall of Fame coach Tubby Smith, his wife Donna, Joe, and Pooh. And these guys did a great job, Vince, with the program. So we knew we inherited winners, guys that understood how to defend. We had to add some pieces in recruiting. We've done that. So um, I, I had a vision that we could be a part of the fight, and uh, it's fun living it out. Well, Chris Beard has done an unbelievable job in his second season with Texas Tech, taking them to new heights, number four ranking, and number two seeding here at the Big 12 tournament. But what I love is he acknowledges that some of those pieces were in place before he got there, but he's done a good job coaching them. And the other thing I love, his five seniors, he told them after senior night in the locker room, when we win the championship and get rings, you guys will all be part of that and get those because you've laid this foundation. Well, that's what we call, Holly, coaching etiquette 101. There's two things you do, Bob, when you take over a new program, when you're the new coach. If, if, it's, a if it's a bad program, you never criticize the coach you took over for. You don't say, well, we inherited a mess and we're cleaning it up. Conversely, when you take over a really good program, you compliment the coach who you replaced. And obviously, Tubby Smith is a great coach. And that's what you call security in yourself. Feeling secure about your own coaching ability that you can acknowledge a coach who's had success. Doesn't always happen. And I can tell you it doesn't happen. Keenan Evans tied up. Held ball. Defensive player of the year in the league. Make it like it there. Javon Carter tied up Evans. Possession arrow will keep it with Texas Tech. How about the team fouls, though? That last one on Beetle Bolden making it five team fouls on West Virginia in the second half. Tech hasn't fouled yet. All alone, it's Francis, short for three. Miles for two. Canate keeps it alive, draws the foul. That's the first of the second half. Uh, Texas Tech is going to go against Zach Smith. That's his first. Yeah, that was a battle inside, Bob, between Hamilton and Kanate. And Kanate stuck with it. He's got a little bit of a temper. Just a sophomore from Mali. He's only been playing basketball since 2014. He's got a brood of brothers that have played college basketball as well. His brother Pagari played for Minnesota. And Sags Canate, you know, one of 14 siblings, grew up playing soccer, but only took up basketball after he followed some of his brothers over to the U.S. So his really first serious exposure to basketball was when he got to high school and came over to the U.S. Well, it's assistant coach Eric Martin, who handles the big guys, he's been a big brother to Sags Canate. And has not only worked on his offensive game, but just his temperament. And remember, Martin was the guy that played on Bob Huggins' first Final Four team and understands how to play for Bob Huggins. Don't think that isn't important. Hamilton to Stevenson, tied up by Carter. Forced one up, no good. And Sachs Canate takes it away. Javon Carter blocked by Hamilton.
Keenan Evans will drive it with the left hand. He can't finish. Brandon Francis can. Tied for the fifth time. Got the feeling we're going to have 14 more minutes of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Both of these teams are built with the same DNA. Toughness. Canate in the post. Five to shoot. Back outside. Carter. Got a three. And how good was that? That time he caught the ball and looked to the middle of the floor. And when you look middle, you see 90% of the floor. And that time he saw the open Carter. Let's watch now. He's got that jump hook in his arsenal. But watch him look opposite. And when you look middle, you see 90% of the floor. And most importantly, you see a guy like Carter who can knock that open shot down. Fun part for us, Bob, as we watch these guys through the years, how good will Kanate be as a junior and senior? Hamilton, the only player that stayed on the floor for Texas Tech. Four new players in the game. Here's Justin Gray. And now it's Culver. Reverse. Good. Oh, is he going to be good? In the game in Morgantown, when they were without three starters, when they started to need offense, Jared Culver took over and he had his career high 26. He has a sense of the moment. Carter rims home another three. Zaire Smith tripped up. That's the last foul to give for West Virginia. So free throws the rest of the way for Texas Tech. We've got nearly 13 minutes to go. And conversely, Texas Tech's only committed one foul this half. And that's the third on Dax Miles. Tommy Hamilton fades away. How good has he been? Oh, yeah. That was good defense, too. He's got five points, but tack on six assists. He has created a lot of offense for Texas Tech. Straight away three for Carter. He's got three in a row. Here comes that pressure. Tommy Hamilton at 6'11", relieves it by handling the ball. Pretty good strategy by Chris Beard. Hamilton can't catch up to the pass from Moretti. Tommy Hamilton, the transfer from DePaul. This is a team of role players. Everybody knows their role. Tommy Hamilton puts it in the basket. And when you talk about some of the best players to come through this league, you put Javon Carter at the top of your list. Be a chip weekend as champ week will wrap up. Phillip 66 Big 12 Championship starts a trio of championship games tomorrow night. We'll have it for you at 6 Eastern here in Kansas City, followed by the New York Life ACC Championship. Then Sunday they play in St. Louis for the SEC title. Hopefully you'll join us for all three championship games. Ayer Smith gives it up to Culver, and that draws Texas Tech within three. Out of a, out of a timeout, they tried to run a play, and team wasn't paying attention because it was the first time tonight Texas Tech went to a zone. Now they show zone and they're back into man-to-man. -to -man. Little trickeration by Chris Beard. He did that on the opening play of the Kansas game in Lubbock. Eight to shoot. Down to five. Carter in the corner. Looking for another three. That one's short. Bob Wischusen, Fran Fraschilla, Holly Rowe. 
here in Kansas City at the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. And exactly the game that we expected. If you get a basket, you earned it against both of these two teams the way they play defense. Well, you are correct. Culver on the drive. Great hands by Carter. Nice try on the follow by Zaire Smith. And a good rebound for Lamont, Lamont West. And Smith never really got both paws on that ball to get it up at the rim. That little switch in defenses has thrown West Virginia into a little bit of a tizzy here for a couple possessions. Carter flips one up, won't go. Saved nicely by Wesley Harris of Zaire Smith. So that's going to give West Virginia a fresh 30. And that'll bring Sags Kanate back in. And this is why Wesley Harris is in the lineup, not for his scoring, but for his rebounding and hustle. You see right there, it's exactly the right play. Veteran officiating crew of Doug Sermons, Jerry Pollard, and that's Tom Eads on the right. And they may go to the monitor just to make sure that the shot hit the rim. It certainly looked like it did, which should mean that the shot clock should reset, which exactly. should mean everything is correct as it reads right now. It should be a quick, pretty quick review for Doug Sermons, but it gives each coach a free timeout. So we'll take another look on the drive by Carter. Spins it off the glass. And no doubt about it, definitely hits the rim. So, teams will be right back out on the floor pretty quickly. And they are. Veteran officiating crew. I'm of the opinion that the Big 12 has as good of a, as officiating as any in the country. If these three called the championship game of the NCAA tournament, you wouldn't be surprised. Absolutely not. That's the experience level on the court. Only people that don't like these officials are the fans of both teams. <laughs> Say people that don't like us. Well, that's the only people that don't like us are the fans of both teams, Bob. <laughs> and there's just there's a correlation here. <laughs> you sensing a pattern? Yes. Holly likes us. Um, I would like for you guys to speak for yourselves because I think the fans of both of these teams <laughs> like some of us. Oh, they love you, Holly, yeah. and rightfully you're, so. You're never included in that collective <laughs> us, Holly, as Dax Miles is making a lot of West Virginia fans like him right now as aggressively as he is playing. He will go to the free throw line, and this is a player that if you track through his career, Fran, he has never improved his shooting from a percentage standpoint until the second half of this year. From three as a freshman, 36%. As a sophomore, 33%. As a junior, down to 30%. 32% total this year. But he can be streaky, and boy, has he been on the right side of streaky over the last couple of weeks. You know why he's been streaky good lately? Beetle Bolden. Because when Dax Miles missed a, missed a couple games, it was, was under the weather, lost his starting spot, Beetle Bolden went into the lineup, played well. Dax Miles said, well, I'm going to have to earn my spot back. And he has. And boy, is he knocking down shots. Well, guys, Dexter Miles took that to heart. He said, you know, I wasn't that upset to not be in the starting lineup because part of it was health-related. He got ill, and then he had an ankle injury that kind of had limited him. So he understood Coach Huggins' decision. But what he did when he got back healthy as he got in the gym, he said, I would do two-a-day practices in the gym by myself before practice, and then I would do another late-night session. So that's four times a day he was getting into the gym to get up extra shots. And since then, he's been averaging almost 13 points a game to complement that hard work that paid off. So, it, you know, was a little bit of motivation being out of the starting lineup, but more importantly, he got healthy and got in the gym. Foul called away from the ball on Hamilton. Competition is a good thing. It is. And cutting back door against pressure is a good thing too, Bob. And a good decision right there. Good finish. Watch this. And this is Tommy Hamilton again. Boy, he has become terrific at the high post and that's what you do with the motion offense you don't you can put your big guy anywhere on the court you want another three for dexter miles that speaks to him living in the gym 
And by the way, he's an excellent student, too, for anybody who thinks he spends all his time in their gym. Another rebound for Wesley Harris. Here comes Javon Carter. He attacks Hamilton. Hamilton got a piece. Well, here's that example. Holly talked about living in the gym. Your senior year, your last go around. And he has been on fire in this tournament. You know, it's one thing to be a good shooter or get hot. It's another thing to get hot at the right time, like in a conference tournament. Even the handoffs in this game are contested and tough. In the corner, looking for a long-range jumper and finding it is Justin Gray. That is not his strength, Bob. 24%, but shot it confidently. That is his sixth made three this season, and it comes at a big time. He made a couple big ones at Allen Fieldhouse to start the season. That big win over Kansas. Carter, that triple comes up short. And a foul on Harris. That's a shooting foul. That'll be a one and one at the other end. So Evans will go to the line. And Keenan Evans has struggled at the line in this tournament. Only two for four tonight. 83% during the season. again but an offensive rebound Zaire Smith and he gets the foul on Kanata this young man is a freak of nature Zaire Smith I think Jericho Sims and Zaire Smith to me both freshmen the two best athletes in this league Sims at Texas Zaire Smith at a Garland Texas right outside of Dallas you know he reminds me of John Starks Former New York Nick. It looks a little like him. He does. Jumps a little bit like him. Well, Fran, you're talking about what a good athlete he was. He was actually a two-sport athlete. He was a very good running back in football. He said all the way up until ninth grade, he was a running back until he started kind of concentrating on basketball. But if you look at the build of his lower body, his quads, his thickness, he is actually really well built. And uh, he said it helps him with that jumping and being strong under the basket. Much stronger than you'd think for his size. Aren't too many six foot five tailbacks. No. I'll tell you what's interesting about Zaire Smith. His dad, Billy Ray, played with Mookie Blaylock at junior college. Then he played for Lon Kruger at Kansas State. And Bill Snyder convinced Zaire's dad to play football his fifth year. And he was a terrific special teams guy. And so I uh, mentioned it earlier, Texas Tech filled with athlete, athletic families. And that young man is a great athlete. How'd you like to play for Bill Snyder and Lon Kruger? Two great coaches. Program builders. Yep. When you're still coaching, and the stadium is named after you, you know you did a good job. Esau Ahmad's got to be careful with the basketball, and Giddens, a runner against the backboard, it falls through. Just like you drew it up, Bob. Hamilton, a rare miss with a pass. Here's Miles. This would be a rare miss. And he finds the bottom again. Wow. We saw Malik Newman in the first game. First two games that should be heating up. And how about Daxter Miles? Five triples for Miles. And Chris Beard wants a timeout. Just a moment. After Texas Tech took a six-point lead and cut it down to one, West Virginia pushes the lead right back up to five. Little backdoor action. Daxter Miles 
hotter than fish grease. <laughs>、oh, right, Kevin, thanks very much. Little still laughing、kids. about that one. Oh, they will love that in Morgantown. Number one pick in the draft, DeAndre Ayton. I believe so. It's three months away. A lot can change, but、uh, that young man has had an amazing year. And the most in- impressive thing to me, Bob, is he plays hard on both ends of the floor. Evans to Culver. Long rebound, run down by Javon Carter. Speaking of playing hard on both ends of the floor, that encapsulates these two teams. Oh, there's no question, and, and I like what Tech is doing. As far as getting ready for next week, these teams are going to be、uh, a handful in the NCAA tournament. I think Tech can go. I honestly think they they can get to the Elite Eight, and, and if West Virginia is making shots the way Miles and Carter have, they can as well. Nine Stevenson lost it out of bounds, knocked out by Lamont West. It'll stay with Texas Tech when we come back. The final six and a half minutes in a moment. Time for our Big Monday Crew's favorite Big 12 flashback, brought to you by Philip 66. Now we are a big fan of the shot, but we're a much bigger <laughs> fan in the foreground. I'm a fan. Making sure、I'm、to not、fan. cheer is Fred for sure. I'm a fan of college <laughs> basketball. That, uh, I did that with Kemba Walker in the Garden. That was fun. That was a fun night. The next day at practice, I, I walked into West Virginia's practice, and they all said, "Heal, heal." <laughs> <laughs> Stevenson blocked by Canate. Miles fouled shooting a three. Culver got him on the elbow. That's his second. Only four team fouls on Texas Tech, but that's a big one. It's going to put Daxter Miles, who's a 75% free throw shooter, at the line to try and stretch the lead. Well, Chris Beard told his team in that last timeout, "Look, guys, we're running out of time." He said. Who's the best player on West Virginia? And they all answered Javon Carter, and he told them the score that he has. He said, "Who's the best three-point shooter right now in West Virginia?" They all answered Daxter Miles. So he said, "We have to play harder on the defensive end and get stops. Pay more attention to Javon Carter and Daxter Miles." And then on the offensive end, he said, "Look, we're in the bonus. I want you driving the basketball every single time." And I think to that point, Bob, Jared Culver was playing hard. He just played a little too hard. Because in challenging that three, like his coach wanted, he committed that foul, an era of commission. Two of three at the line for Miles, still the largest lead for West Virginia, up to eight. Culver crosses over, score the bucket, blocking foul called on Issa Ahmad. What a crossover move that was! In 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 stride. Take a look at this. This is six foot six, a freshman. Watch the crossover move right here. Whoops! Goes by, and you see Ahmad sliding in there. I thought he was moving. See him move to the right. But what a move by Jarrett Culver! The first time we saw him, Bob, when we saw him at at the、uh, Garden against Seton Hall, he came out on the court. He looks like an NBA player. He's not there yet, nor should he be. But he's got the prototype shooting guard build. Harris in for Ahmad, and now Texas Tech will set up some pressure. Twenty-one years in the Big 12 championship, Texas Tech has been to the championship game one time. Of course, West Virginia's been there the last two years in a row, looking for a third straight trip. Miles straight away. That's off the mark, and they have yet to win a Big 12 championship tournament title. West leans in. That's blocked. Zaire Smith got a hand on it. Here comes Evans. 
Evans slows up. Finger roll is good. Oh, that was a tough shot in traffic. Really good spin on that ball. And a great block to start it by Zaire Smith. Canate off balance. Naeem Stevenson. Bang from the corner and we're tied. First guy Chris Beard signed when he got the job, Naeem Stevenson. Just a moment after West Virginia takes their largest lead, an 8-0 response from the Red Raiders. Right where we expected to be, tied with under five to go. Well, these guys have that winning DNA. Let's take a look right here. Watch the block by the freshman. And then Keenan Evans, this is terrific agility. Finishing it, good spin. Nicely done. And then right here, drive it, draw to D. And then Naeem Stevenson, another one of those Dallas kids. He's a junior college player who Chris Beard signed about a week after he got the job. Both teams have taken their turn to take a fairly sizable lead and have the other come back with an almost immediate run as West Virginia was down by nine in the first half at a one point lead at halftime. Carter and Miles have certainly carried the way. Tommy Hamilton, he came into tonight averaging less than one assist per game. He's got seven <laughs> assists tonight to go along with five points. So unlikely storylines, but exactly the storyline we expect at tied at 56. Yeah, both of these teams have, have had great seasons. They've had their travails. Obviously, West Virginia giving away some big leads. Texas Tech losing four games in part because of a rash of injuries. But both of these teams have been tough all season long. I think the interesting thing for Texas Tech, and they've done this from the very start of the year, two freshmen in crunch time on the court. They stepped into this lineup in November, and they didn't play or look like freshmen. Benate faces up, leans in, can't score it. Texas Tech has not had the lead since we had a little over five minutes to go in the first half. Five guard offense. Think about that. They're spreading the floor with five guards. Culver gets to the baseline, draws the foul. A lot of contact after the whistle. And Culver will go to the free throw line. Here's what I want you to think about, Bob. Texas Tech runs an offense. We call it motion. It's random. It's, it's freedom of movement, cutting, passing. And when you run a motion offense, you don't play with positions. And in this case right now, Texas Tech is putting five really good offensive players on the floor. All can handle, shoot it, and make shots. And it's the double bonus as West Virginia has now committed 10 team fouls. Lamont West back in for Kanate. A little over four minutes to go, so it will be a brief rest, you would think, for Kanate. And Texas Tech still only with four team fouls. They've got two more to give in the final four minutes. Well, with Kanate going out now, the only guy they have to worry about inside with the small lineup is Issa Ahmad. And we'll see if Bob Huggins goes inside. Gray on a mod, so they're going to look that way. Watch. Carter leans in, draws the foul, score it. A chance for a three-point play. Javon Carter puts West Virginia back on top. What a final 354 we expect to have as Javon Carter. He's got 16. Miles has 21. 
The two guards have carried the Mountaineers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you. Champ Week continues. The Jayhawks already in the Big 12 championship game. Player of the year got the job done and help off the bench. Mitch Lightfoot, a great job off the bench in place of the injured Yudoka Azabuki. The supporting cast gave Devontae Grand the support he needed. And Kansas has advanced with an 83-67 win over a shorthanded Kansas State team in one semifinal. Who will join them? 6 Eastern tomorrow night, ESPN. The Phillips 66 Big 12 championship game. Here is Javon Carter at the free throw line, completing the three-point play to put West Virginia on top by two. Bob Wachins and Fran Fraschilla. Holly Rowe with you for the last four minutes. Uh, lucky to get it in. Zaire Smith actually went to call timeout. Remember, West Virginia's 10 fouls, so everything from here is two shots for Texas Tech. Shot clock winding down. Culver a long way from the goal. Four to shoot. He's going to have to force one. Instead, it's Evans. Just about banked at home. Great defense by West Virginia. Got a mismatch with Ahmad. Let's see if they go to it. Looks like they're going to spread. Carter spins. A little too strong off the window. Naeem Stevenson gets tied up with Harris. And Harris called for the foul. Not a smart play by Harris. He did that last night and Bob Huggins took him out. You've got 10 team fouls. You foul 93 feet from the other team's basket. And Bob Huggins is saying, get him out. And here comes Kanate, right on cue. Wesley Harris is a high-energy guy. He's a sophomore. Juco transfer, but he's got to know better than that. Stevenson, a 70% free throw shooter. Texas Tech is now 9 for 17 at the line. And West Virginia no better. They're 9 for 15. Zach Smith will take out Culver. And that's a that's a mat a matchup substitution there because with Kanate and Ahmad in the game Chris Beard needs a little more size and he's walking Culver right back to the table mm -hmm. Kanate jump hook yes you can credit that to assistant coach Eric Martin because they've spent two years on that jump hook over the left shoulder and it is just about automatic Zaire Smith, able to get it to the middle, now it's Keenan Evans. Check that, Stevenson, back to Smith. Ended up with the other Smith. The law firm connects inside, and Zach able to finish, and it's a one-point game. Timeout called by Bob Huggins. Watch this catch in the low post and watch Kanate. He's going to go over the left shoulder, Bob. He's looking for position. Now when the ball comes in, turns left shoulder, and he, he can make it either banking it or straight in. But watch Smith and Smith. The freshman it gets in trouble, but what does he do? He draws two defenders and Zach Smith in the right spot at the right time. One point lead for West Virginia. Just over two minutes to go. Now, late game situation. Does either of these two teams, in your opinion, with their personnel, have an advantage over no. the other? Where are your priorities if you're Beard and Huggins? Who do you want shooting the ball? Strengths. You go to your strengths. We've seen already that Bob Huggins is going into 
cannot they? Now Texas Tech knows that, and they're going to try to close that down. On the other hand, Texas Tech is an equal opportunity offense. All five guys touch it, they move it, they look for the first good shot. For Texas Tech, the go-to guy is the open man. For West Virginia, you have Kanate inside, you have Javon Carter and Dax Miles outside. The reason you like to go inside here is because if you miss, you still have a chance to get to the foul line. Carter drives it. It's blocked by Gray. Kanate's got it. Lays it up. And in as the shot clock was about to expire. And he went over the left shoulder on that side as well. Good recognition with the clock low. Foul on Daxter Miles. Again, it's the double bonus. So two free throws. That's an easy call. Dax is going to impede his progress off that double screen, and he got in the way. Take a look. Well, he, Hugs didn't like it, but he doesn't like any call, so it doesn't really matter. And that's four on Daxter Miles. So if this game goes to overtime, and it might, that's been the hottest hand that West Virginia has had. He needs to be careful. Keenan Evans with a miss at the line. Gray went over the back. And Keenan Evans came into tonight at 85% from the line. He's now 3 for 7 shooting free throws. And the Red Raiders fortunate they were only at, at the 5 team fouls. So now it's 6. Next one puts West Virginia in the bonus. And the Red Raiders bob back to a small lineup. That means Gray on Kanate. Texas Tech likes to trap in these situations around the midcourt line. And they don't, they choose not to. Foul on Gray. That's it for the fouls to give. That's number seven. So it will be a one-and-one one for Kanate. And he's an excellent free throw shooter for a big man. at 79%. That's an interesting call because in guarding Kanate, they had given away about 40 pounds. Gray's technique was really good until the very end. And then he pushed off. Chris Beard did not like that call. And Doug Sermons wants him to sit down. Two possession game with 111 to go. Now it's about stops for West Virginia. And you've got a couple great defenders out there, one at the rim and one on the ball. Keenan Evans, tough shot, gets it to go, plus the foul. You score on Javon Carter, you're doing something. That was a really good matchup. Evans took it deep, hung in the air, drew the contact. This is a tough move. Look at Carter. He gives no ground, but Keenan Evans makes a tough shot. And he needs this free throw. Three of seven at the line. Wow. He can't believe it. Two-point game. Don't need to foul. You need to stop. And with a small lineup, you've got to get five guys on the glass if you're Texas Tech. For West Virginia, Javon Carter loves these situations if they can't get it inside. Carter, five to shoot. He'll drive it, wrap a pass for Kanate. Out of bounds, stays with West Virginia, but three on the shot clock. And it looks like 
Bob Huggins will use this opportunity to try and drop an out of bounds underneath with three to shoot. Okay, here's what we got here, Bob. Chris Beard and his staff, they know what's coming. It's going to be an inbounds play underneath. It's got to be something quick, either Carter out to the corner and inside quickly or right inside. Now, here's where West, here's where Texas Tech is really good. They love to switch in this situation. So no matter what screen you set, they defeat the screen by switching. And if they do a good job, they're going, they may have... They may force West Virginia to have trouble getting this ball inbounds. This is as good a scouting report defensive team as there is in the Big 12. For those just joining us after the Duke North Carolina game, we still have 29 seconds to go in the semifinals of the Phillips 66 Big 12 championship game between West Virginia and Texas Tech. These two teams fighting to get to tomorrow night's title game at 6 Eastern on ESPN. The right to take on Kansas for the Big 12 championship. Three seconds to shoot for West Virginia. It's in to Dax Miles, fades away. Short, Culver's got it. Shot clock turned off. Big time stop by Culver. Where's Evans? There He's he got is. it. Evans, contested three, way short. Zaire Smith keeps it alive. Stolen by Miles. Six seconds to go. Dexter Miles is fouled. Look at the hustle right here. And all Smith is trying to do is save it. Because you can't call timeout when you leave your feet going out of bounds. But watch the defense by Javon Carter. This is the ultimate one-on-one -on -one matchup in this league. Two of the best guards and the defensive player of the year comes out on top. 14 seconds still to play. Hand in the face of Keenan Evans with the defensive player of the year. Back-to-back -back years all over you. And two timeouts that you could have used at any point. That whole sequence for Texas Tech seemed ragged. And rather than a veteran guard maybe calling a timeout, or maybe the coach yelling for a timeout, I can't imagine that's the shot they wanted. Well, Shaka Smart is watching this game saying, why didn't he call timeout when he made that shot against us? You have to just remember and trust your guys. You come down to a situation with the, where you're the best player on your team. He just felt that he could get a shot off. And unfortunately, he won the first battle about a minute earlier. He lost the second battle when it may have counted the most. And neither team has shot foul shots well. Texas Tech is 11 of 21 at the line, and they're down by two. West Virginia, 11 of 17 as a team. So this game is far from over because all Texas Tech needs, even if West Virginia gets it in, well, is to hope for one missed free throw to keep it a one possession yeah. game. Here's what I would do if I was Texas Tech right now. If it's a one possession game, which means one missed free throw, because it's going to be a one and one, no timeout. Get the ball to Evans with 6.8 and let him operate in transition. Now we had the situation yesterday between TCU and Kansas State talking about fouling or not fouling at the end of regulation and then overtime. And it was a constant flow situation where a coach didn't have a chance to call a timeout and address that with his team. West Virginia just used their last timeout. In that huddle, is that something Bob Huggins just addressed? We miss a foul shot here. He should. Are we fouling before Texas Tech can get a three off? He, he may have done that, but he also doesn't want to jinx his foul shooter. So let's see how the first one goes. It is still a one and one for Miles. And he's got it. If this is a miss, I was West pushing. Virginia of the mindset to foul. I think they are. And if it's a miss, and I'm Keenan Evans, and they're going to take the timeout here. Well, Chris Beard's going to call a timeout, which will give Bob Huggins the opportunity to address, I would think, exactly that with his team as well. well it's amazing with 6.8 seconds to go 
how many different strategic machinations yep. can be taking place right now in both of these huddles with the game on the line. This is why this is why you practice these situations. In football, we call this special teams, okay? In basketball, we call them special situations. So let's take them. If it's if it's a four-point game, then Texas Tech, what I would do, throw it, let the ball drop through, throw the ball the length of the court like a home run play to catch it and lay it in because West Virginia's not going to foul. And then you, you utilize very few seconds. If it's a three-point game, get it to Evans, let him go up to court. If you're West Virginia right here and it's a three-point game, you want to foul somewhere before midcourt. But you got to make sure that that player is not in the act of shooting. Bob, something that's never, not really practiced, doesn't happen very much here. If the ball goes through the net, don't take it out right away. Let your, let your team set up and then fire the ball to the other end of the court. And if you score, look at that, 6.8. You may have 5.8 to set up your defense. Let's see how it goes. It all hinges on this free throw from Daxter Miles. He didn't get it. Trey's got it for Texas Tech. Will West Virginia foul? Naeem Stevenson mid-court. Just off the mark. West Virginia. They're going back to the championship game. And they're going to get another crack this year at Kansas. Terrific game between two excellent defensive teams. So well coached. And in spite of the low score, well played. No question, Bob. When you play a team three times in a league like this with great coaching, it's like playing in the backyard with your brother or your cousin. You know every move, nothing really works, and you have to just grind it out. Now, they never were able to get the ball to Evans, and this is not the best situation for Gray, but credit West Virginia. Look how they corral the ball and take time off the clock, and that helps them win this game. Naeem Stevenson may have had room for another dribble or two as he let that ball go from midcourt with, I would say, just a hair under two seconds still on the clock. The horn and the light didn't go off until the ball was all the way up at the rim. That's so why. he probably took a lesser percentage shot than he needed to take from midcourt. Absolutely. We call that a dribble per second. I believe he had it with 2.2. He had two more dribbles. Three times in a row, West Virginia has had double-digit leads against Kansas, and they've lost those three games. They get another try for the conference championship on the line tomorrow, Holly. Well, Javon, with about 15 seconds left in this game, it was just you and Keenan Evans coming down one-on-one. -on -one. You defended him on that three-point play. What was going through your mind defensively? Um, I wanted to make him put it in his weak hand. Um, our coach Eric Martin does a great job on the scout report. He said if he puts it in his left, he likes to go hard, step back, and I played it well, and he took a contested shot. What do you say about the fight in your team to be in the Big 12 championship game for the third straight year? Um, that's just what we're about. You know, um, that's West Virginia basketball. We wear this, um, this uniform with a lot of pride, and we're not going to go home empty-handed, not this year. Kansas got you twice this year. What has to be different against the Jayhawks tomorrow? Um, we got to stop them in transition. Um, just make them, make, them, make them take tough shots, guard, and we'll be fine. We'll see you tomorrow in the championship. All right, see you then. Thanks, Javon. Well, it took a hard-fought win over Texas Tech to get there, but you know West Virginia wanted another crack at Kansas. Absolutely, and what a matchup it's going to be. They say you can't beat a team three times. I'm not sure about that, but I do know this. Kansas is the Big, big 12 regular season champ. West Virginia wants their own title, and they feel they deserve it. We'll find out, Bob. For the third straight year, West Virginia is in the championship game. Can they win it tomorrow at 6? We'll have it for you. For Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe, I'm Bob Wachusen. Hopefully you'll join us at 6 Eastern on ESPN tomorrow for the title game. It's time for Golden Boy Boxing.